Hi, this is Chuck Malone with Strong Towns. Justin just asked me a question about how a land tax would actually work, and I thought, let's do a bonus uh, video, uh, some bonus Strong Towns Network stuff, and I'll explain that right here because it is uh, fairly simple but uh, very important to understand. Let's take uh, four properties, and uh, you know, one, two, three, four different properties right next to each other, all the same size, all with the same characteristics. The assessor goes out, or back up a sec. Uh, of these properties here, you've got two of them that are vacant, and two of them have a building on them. Okay. The assessor goes out and looks at these and says, for each property, the land is worth, let's say, a hundred thousand. Okay. So each of these, the land is worth a hundred thousand. And uh, these properties here are worth. Let me see, uh, 300, the, the, the buildings are worth 300,000. In a current property tax system, this property here is 400, 400, 100, 100. You have a million dollars worth of value in the property tax system. If, let's say that we tax these at, uh, you know, $10,000 total. I know I'm using a lot of numbers here, but follow me. The total tax is 10,000. Let me do that in green so that you can follow that. Let's say the total tax is 10,000. Okay? So, your portion of that is going to be your percentage of a million. So, 100,000 is 10%. These people would pay 1,000 in taxes. These people would pay 1,000 in taxes. This place would pay 4. And this place would pay 4. Okay? Now, let's look at a land tax. You have the same valuation here, but only 400,000 of it is added together for a land tax, just the value of the land. We ignore the value of the structures. So now you have a total assessed value of 400,000. Okay? You still apply that same 10,000 taxes. That's how much we're going to tax this. But the way that tax is now distributed is vastly different. Okay? Now this place is paying 2,500. This place is paying 2500 This one is paying 2500 And this one is paying 2500 Okay? Because the land is all worth the same. Now, you see right away, what this does is it benefits the people that improve their property. And the people who don't improve their property are paying just as much tax as the people who do. Think about this in real life now. We go by with a sewer or water project. We put an investment into a street section. And someone decides, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to have a parking lot here. And I'm going to charge people to park on my property. So I'm going to have very low taxes. And I'm going to have you know, revenue coming in. And I'm just going to let it sit like that. We actually subsidize this person by this over here. This guy decides he's going to build on it and make something out of that investment. Uh, this person winds up paying far more taxes than the person that just lets their property sit, even though we've put all this public investment in out here. On the reciprocal side, uh, you know, when, when, when someone does improve their property, what happens is it makes all everything else kind of more valuable, and everybody's taxes go up. So it creates this kind of huge disincentive to do nothing and to basically let your property depreciate and decline. City comes by and says, you know what, we're going to spruce up this neighborhood, we're going to fix the street. Everybody goes, no, no, don't do that. Uh, that will just raise our uh, taxes. We don't want that. We don't want our property values to go up. The property tax system punishes investments that improve the value of property. The land tax system, if we want to talk about punishment, punishes property that is left idle. In the current era that we're in, we need properties to become more and more productive over time. And so to have a system that punishes that is completely counterproductive. If we could go, particularly in areas where we have utilities in place, where we've made these large public investments, uh, we need to switch from a property tax to a land tax so that we don't reward idle, low productive properties and we don't punish people who invest uh, and better their community. Understanding that, you build a strong town. Okay, now we're going to have bonus, bonus footage. <laughs> Justin asked the question, okay, so why don't we have a land tax? Genius, this is so obvious, why don't we do it? The reason we don't do it is because we started with a property tax.
Okay, that's what we put into effect. We put, you know, with whatever proper intentions, we created a property tax. And now we see that it has this distorting effect. And then we say, okay, well, the logical thing is to change to a land tax. Yes, it's logical for these two voters, but it's not logical for these two voters. These two voters are saying, what the heck, I don't want to change to this tax. So anytime you put a system like this in place, especially if there's no phase out, it's just, you know, this is our system from now to the end of time, uh, you create interests around keeping the system the way it is. And you create a certain amount of inertia that is very hard to overcome from a political standpoint. So the reason why we haven't switched is not because it doesn't make sense to switch, it's because anytime you're doing something big that's going to have big consequences from a tax standpoint for people, that change is really hard to make, even if it makes logical, logical sense. Good? Got it. All right.